It was 1933 when Frederick Ellis Brigham, a determined Yorkshireman with an inventive streak, launched his own business in Conrad Street, North Manchester. He was a bootmaker by trade and an avid time trial racer and cycling record holder. You, you would certainly get out into Yorkshire Dales and places like this. He just knew what was required. It was a case of whatever the customer wanted, he tried to supply. He set up business making cycling and running shoes. And then the demand came that people couldn't get hold of good quality walking boots, climbing boots. So he made it his mission to, to solve that problem. That's how it took off for us. Alpine Bootmaker proclaimed the proud sign above his shop. Fred Brigham invented his own boot nails, which he called the Brigham Plate, a claw-like fixture which was attached to the sole and round the welt. He collaborated with an engineer friend to also market the Brigham Peacock Plate, a similar device but boasting replaceable screw-in nails. As Fred perfected nailing patterns for expert mountaineers and rock climbers, his skills were in demand across the land. The well-informed Fred Brigham would enthusiastically pass on his in-depth knowledge, and scores of climbers began walking the two miles from the city centre, just to look in his window and listen to the variety of advice. After the war, Fred began to seek out Alpine mountain gear manufacturers who were often tucked away in the villages of Europe's high mountain regions across Austria, France, Italy and Switzerland. Exotic climbing hardware and boots began to appear on the shelves of Brigham's Manchester shop. The place was just strewn with equipment, but I do remember as a child I got to play with all this ex-army equipment which would include things like skis and snowshoes. Sadly, Fred Brigham died before the end of the 50s, but the business was taken over by eldest son Bob, then only 18. Nineteen sixty was a milestone year in Brigham's history, with the opening of the Manchester City Centre Shop in Cathedral Street and the publication of the first customer catalogue. And that's at the time when everything was just starting to take off because it was typical 60s. Then followed a decade of development and innovation. The Brigham's designed the first chest harness for climbing and developed the Annapurna, a revolutionary new double skin tent. They also brought to market the famous Moak, the most versatile chockstone of its time. People were starting to go skiing because the packaged ski holidays were available and so people were feeling much more vibrant than they had in the 50s. The whole scene changed, everybody was going for it. The British ski scene was developing fast. More and more people were taking up the sport and holidaying in the French Alps. Always in search of progressive ideas, the brothers developed Manchester and Liverpool's first artificial ski slopes. We literally put up a, a wooden slope, you know, sort of a 20 foot high room, and the whole idea was to teach people the basics of skiing so that when they went on the holiday, they wouldn't know what it was about. By the 1970s, there were four Brigham shops across the country, boasting the most technical mountain and outdoor sports equipment, including the first lightweight rock shoes and modern nylon climbing rope. By the 1980s, the ski scene was positively booming. Enterprising, as always, the Brigham's stocked their shops with the UK's first snowboards. Parents used to go skiing and drag the kids along with them. And then when snowboarding came out, the kids were able to put their mark on the snowboard. Snowboarding continued to gain momentum, and so the Snowboard Asylum was established, a dedicated shop-in-shop -shop concept area selling cutting-edge snowboard equipment. The snowboarder didn't want to be known as anything to do with the skier, so we had to treat the two totally separate, uh, and that's, that's how it was for quite a long time.
always in pursuit of new ideas, Bob began to develop an ice wall idea he'd seen in Europe. Two shops were fitted with refrigerated units, which allowed enthusiasts to test out gear and practice their technique. Bob's idea he stuck with it. Anybody else probably would have said, oh, no, it's not going to work. Pack it but he, he stuck with it and made it, made it work. It took him quite a while to get it right, but uh, in the end he got there. It wasn't long before the next generation of Brigham Sons would follow suit. I never really thought I'd do anything else. I do know that my dad at the time was wishing I'd grow up faster so I could take on more responsibility. I spent time working in the accounts department, I've spent time in, in every little facet of the business to try and learn it because it's what I wanted to do. Now, with 24 stores across the country, the Ellis Brigham brand continues to be a leader in the field. 80 years after Frederick established his small shop, the Brighams can still proudly call themselves a family business. My dad really took up that mantle for striving for better, as did Ellis, and they've really achieved miracles with the business, you know, taking it from one little shop to what it is today. The fact it's a family business gives it a definite a different dimension. In fact, it's got this history associated with it, with a lot of sort of innovation and a lot of um, just hard work, really. It says a lot for the culture and the values of the company. Um, it almost defines the culture and the values of the company. And we're driven by this, this passion to do the best thing and the right thing. Ellis Brigham continued to be the leader in supplying quality amounts of sports clothing to those discerning enthusiasts. And as a family business, we're still determined to strive ahead, searching out those best products for our customers whilst still maintaining those traditional standards and values that I think have set us apart over the last 80 years.